Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with Jaspie's 15 box windmill dunk basketball mixer with a Ja Morant that we're giving away. Look at this. So at the end of the break, I'll re-randomize everybody's names. It'll be a different dice roll. And someone's going to get that 10 out of 10 Ja Morant. Not graded, but you probably should end up grading it. It looks, I mean, at a glance, I'm not an expert at this, but at a glance it looks pretty good. We'll set that aside right here. Ton of boxes in this mixer, ladies and gentlemen. 15 boxes right here. Got some gold standard over here, some retail stuff, all sorts of other fun stuff happening. Some mosaic, old mosaic, new mosaic back there. The mega box edition, so it should be pretty good. Uh, current time right now of this video, 4.33 LA time. YouTube is down, but I'm recording this it's it's what they call in the TV industry live to tape. It's being recorded live to tape. So there it is. Unfortunately, we tweeted this out a little bit ago. That timestamp, or actually, let's change that right here. There's the current time. There's the timestamp of the tweet, right there. At Jaspie's Breaks is our Twitter. So looks like other other people are. I try to pull it up on my phone. I'm getting this on my phone. That's sad times. You know, yeah, Ryan and Bud saying that looks like YouTube just straight up crashed. But this is a long mixer, so may as well get this started and record it live to tape. Unfortunately, no trading window because I don't think the chat's not working either. But let's just roll. Big thanks to all of these folks for getting into the action. Although if some of you did not refresh your page, you may still be able to hear video and audio but not be able to chat. Um, anyway, we did cello pack 37, 38, and 39 and gave away a few spots in each, each of those. So big thanks to these folks for getting into it, and congrats for winning. Thanks to everybody else for buying your spots straight up. I also appreciate that. All 30 basketball teams are in. Let's roll it. Let's randomize each list. Three and a three, six times, six the hard way. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After six times, we've got Nancy down to Johnny. Three and a three, six times for the teams. Four, five, and six. We're recording, right? Yes, we are. Six times. Nuggets down to Pistons. I don't know when this is going to be uploaded, but whenever YouTube comes back alive, I guess. All right. Nancy with the Denver Nuggets, EO with the spot you won, Warriors, Benson with the Pelicans and the Heat, nice, Adam with the Spurs, James with the Trailblazers, Riki with the Jazz and Celtics, the coach Paul Nixon with the Wizards, Adam Kupperman with the Clippers with the spot that he won, Joe won a spot, gets the Hawks, Josh with the Raptors, Jeremy with the Thunder, Benson with the Nets, Ryan with the Hornets, James, last spot Mojo, Lakers, Jimmy with the Pacers, Joseph with the Kings, Johnny with the Rockets, Jonathan with the Bucks, Zach with the Magic, Diane with the Timberwolves, Nancy with the Suns, Jonathan with the Sixers, Paul, the Grizzlies, nice, Chris with the Bulls, Riki with the Knicks, Mavs for James, Paul with the Cavs, there you go, Paul, and Johnny with the Pistons. Paul's in that area. All right, let's get all this on one screen now. Let's alphabetize by team. Unfortunately, since YouTube is down, as you saw at the beginning of the video, there is no, no trade window. I'm afraid. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a hit recap, an autograph or uh, autograph and relic recap, along with any other significant like Zion and John Moran cards. We'll do that. Now, just a couple quick things before I start ripping. So we'll re-randomize the names. The top name will win that John Moran. The second name will get any and all points. And then we'll use the same dice roll at the end for any other randomizers. Here's what the mixer includes. I did a count, double checked all the boxes. All 15 are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I did a count, double checked. So all 15 are in. The Morant at the end. There's the Morant once again right there. So even if you have a terrible break, you know, you can still. Uh, you can still land that John Morant, which apparently could get you close to six thousand dollars. So that'll that'll make up for any bad break. Or you can have the best break ever, and then still get the uh, still end up with the John Morant. Still end up with the John Morant. 
Alright, we're gonna save some of these. We're gonna get move through the, the sort of heavier base boxes out of the way first. And then we'll do some of the the prism retail stuff and whatnot towards the end. There's my knife right here. Alright, good luck everybody. Oh, another note, Veteran Commons will not ship, however, if, except for a few exceptions, just because of the way the, the hobby has been, has been going these days. Um, no Veteran Commons will ship, but Kobe's will, LeBron, Giannis, and, uh, and all, all of the Luka Doncic, second, his second year cards will ship. Obviously, his rookie cards, of course, will ship. So just keep that in mind. Thanks everyone for getting in. So this is, we're starting off with 1819 hoops. And if I have to miss like a numbered card, like sometimes the hoops will have like a card numbered out of 999 or something. If you see me miss one of those, don't worry. Our sorting and shipping team will catch those. Of course, all rookies and inserts will ship. All relics, autographs will ship. the optic, then the optic retail, another hoop spot, another Donner's basketball box. And then after we get through these ones, it should be pretty easy to breeze through the remaining boxes. All right. I I've got all the supplies I need here. Good luck, everybody. So that's, that's an insert right here, so that'll ship. So this is 1819, so let's keep our eyes open for guys like this, right? Miles Bridges, DeAndre Ayton. Luka Doncic and, uh, and Trey Young will be our big priorities here. As soon as I flip these cards around, it'll, it'll go the other way. There's really no way around it. There's Ernie DiGregorio. Everyone remembers him. Right? The old, uh, the old Buffalo Brave. Buffalo! I want to say, I'm looking this up, the Buffalo Braves turned into the Clippers. I'm almost certain. Yeah, I want to switch screens for a second just so you can see when you re-watch re this. Yeah. Bought the Buffalo Braves, moved them to San Diego, turned them into the Clippers, and in the mid-'80s moved them to Los Angeles. Actually, let me write that down. So that's going to go to... Uh, here's the list again right here, printed out. So that's going to go to Adam, who won that spot in the... And that cello pack break. So we'll send that to the Clippers. And I've got a monster box here to put all the excess cards here. All right. Onwards. There's LeBron to 999. Surprising how well those LeBron LeBron cards have gone up significantly too. 
As we got next, insert Luca. We're looking for rookie Lucas, of course. Here's Marcus All for the Grizz. LeBron James. That's four. That's Cavs edition of LeBron James. So that'll go to Paul Nixon. The last two. The last two rookie class. So this is round one, game four. That other one, Paul, was round two, game two. That'd be kind of a cool set to build, right? If you got all the all the road to the finals cards for a particular player. There's Luka Doncic. Nice. So that'll go to James Beadle and the Mavs. You might might if you're lucky enough to get a nice grade out of here. It'll go for a lot. Clippers, take a look at that SGA as well that I just breezed by. But I know that those are, some SGAs are also selling decently. Basketball, the, for the hobby, has been pretty incredible the last couple years. Right, older cards like Giannis rookies have definitely increased in value over the last couple years or so. You know, which led the way to maybe cards like, you know, old LeBron James cards reselling pretty well in secondary market. It was Elia Kobu. And we've had a couple strong rookie classes as well. 18, 19, 19, 20. Those two years had strong rookie classes. There's Elia Kobu for the Suns, Nancy. And so all that has resulted in a sort of revival and reinterest and an increase in value for basketball cards. And of course the pandemic has kept everybody at home. So we've been lucky enough to continue our online operations and with a lot of people stuck at home working from home. We appreciate their disposable income coming to jazbeescasebreaks.com. We appreciate that. But all those different factors has resulted in a in a bit of a boost, which is which is awesome. If you're stuck at home, you know, working from home, I think it'd be worth digging up your old basketball cards, maybe from the last five years. And just pulling out some rookies and pulling out any silver parallels or hollow parallels. And it's just worth taking a look on a secondary mark to see how it's going. Because you may be surprised at how some of these some of these uh, cards have been going. I mean, it's the point where the top tier rookies have really increased the entire floor. The ceiling has been so huge for the top tier rookies that it also naturally brings up the floor of value for some other players too. So even second tier second tier rookies are going for what first tier rookies went for a few years ago. You know what I mean? And obviously top tier rookies are Luka Doncic, Trey Young, John Morant, Zion have just have been selling for eye-watering amounts. So that's why I'm saying look up your old stuff because even third-tier rookies, which may have may not have been worth putting on eBay, you may realize that some some third-tier rookies might sell for like, I mean, you know, it still depends, but might sell for like more than you think. You might be able to gather those up. You know, like a hollow rated rookie, Derek White. Like maybe... When the 1718 set came out, dollar card if you're lucky, maybe it's a five dollar card now. I don't know. But it's worth. I mean, the point is, it's worth looking up. Just Lamarcus Aldridge to 49. 
There's even some veteran cards, especially the ones with special parallels. Have been going pretty well. So all worth a look, especially if you, if you have a little extra time. There's rated rookie Dwayne Bacon, Hollow, and Wobi to 175, Lime, Luke Kennard. And remember, also remember, with, there's Porzingis, Knicks edition to 175. With the basketball players these days, in the last decade or so, coming out of the league, coming into the league at such a young age, you know, it takes them a minute or two to to actually reach their full potential. So, you know, it's, I mean, De'Aaron Fox is still pretty solid. That's to 199 for the Kings. That's Joe Kelly. But I don't know. If you get like a second or third tier, third tier rookie, all right, who knows, you know? Maybe that Devin Reed or something like that, or a Cameron Johnson for this. Uh, never know. There's Josh Jackson. This is King's Edition, rated rookie signatures. Even Josh Jackson. Or, I'm sorry, Sun's Edition. Phoenix. Nancy with that one. Even Josh Jackson, who's currently with the uh, Magic now? Grizzlies? A blue team. But may have, may have washed out of of Phoenix, but, you know, could just be a maturity thing, could just be something where he just needs to put it together, and then the next thing you know, everyone's like, where are those Josh Jackson cards? You know, people will be like, oh, I sold that Josh Jackson for too low. I know this is expired, but, Nancy, you'll get the, uh, I think Panini's now offering points for expired redemption, if they don't have it. We got beat Bobby Flay on the TV in the background. If you're wondering what that is, all right. I just refreshed the Twitter. About 15 minutes ago, EO said, YouTube is back up. I'm watching you now. Hi, Eric. But I'm assuming the chat's not working. Otherwise, I would see the chat. Should I risk refreshing my chat page? Or is it just going to get an error? Oh, no. I think I got I got people in the... Maybe we're back. I should have... I needed to refresh everybody. Oh, I'm back. Hold on, let me let me scan through the high EO. Zach Paul still here. Jared saying YouTube seems back up. Paul Nixon's back. Jonathan L says I can see you live. Arthur says we're back. Adam Kelly says we're back. Game on says Paul. Ryan Harold says that was bizarre. Blah 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 blah. All right, so it looks like everybody's back. Hi, everyone. There, there's Ted. Hi, Ted. I see you. Oh, okay. I just didn't refresh the page. Um, oh, well, since the chat is back, should I show you this again? So in case you're just returning, there is the official printout right there. There you go. I think Paul had a nice random with the spots he bought straight. He got his Cavs. He's a Cavs guy. Got the Grizzlies. There you go. There's everybody else. All right. Welcome back, everybody. That was weird. I'm glad that it didn't didn't last too long. Hi, Luke. I believe is here too. Derek E is here as well. Yeah, Last Dance uh, has also uh, Last Dance has also boosted the value of all those related players, especially MJ. I think I saw something where. A PSA like seven or eight of a rookie, of a Fleer rookie Michael Jordan, sold for a record price. You know, so whatever those PSA sevens or eights go for, I think it, it increased like twenty five percent or something like that. Eric Bailey says, if uh, YouTube goes down, do I break using TikTok videos? I suppose I could. 
But um, we're actually recording live to tape, as they say in the industry. So it would I would just be recording everything. It just wouldn't be <laughs> you just wouldn't be able to chat or watch or trade. There's Red Reggie Jackson. Oh, I thought that was numbered. You're not numbered? You're not numbered. It'll still ship. And we got Andrew Wiggins. Oh, that fooled me too. I'm trolled by Panini. JJ Brea Hollow. And a one of one, Donna Dana Barros. Dana? Donna? Signature series, one of one for Jonathan Lober in the Sixers. Everyone remembers him. All aboard the Big Head Express. Woo -woo. Our first train whistle of the break. We'll do a recap at the end, too. And we got, this is 1718, right? So one year after Ben Simmons. Barrows, Dana Barrows. Paul says a three-point master. I, I I have no recollection of him of him at all. Th those aren't numbered. Tilakina, there's Josh Jackson right there. Arthur remembers him. Did he play? Was there even a three-point line when he played? Sorry, that was a cheap shot. Let's look. <laughs> Let me educate myself on this this gentleman here. All right, he's fifty three years old, born in Boston. First round pick. Oh, first round pick in nineteen eighty nine. So I, come on, I definitely. Selected by the Seattle Seahawks, played from 89 through 2004, what? Played for the Supersonics from 89 to 93, Sixers for a couple years, Celtics for five years, Pistons for a couple years. There's a blank spot between 03 and then signed again by the Celtics in 04 and played a game before he retired. Or maybe he was injured, I don't know. He now works with the media relations department for the Celtics and often serves as a basketball insider for Nesson, the New England Sports Network, and offers analysis and insight on the NBA on the show Nesson Daily. He went to, I think it looks like he went to Boston College. He was an all-star in 95, NBA most improved player in 95, first team all Big East in 88, and number, his number three retired by the Boston College Eagles. War Eagle. No, that's the wrong college. Who says War Eagle? Is that Auburn? Who are, not, who are Tigers, but they say War Eagle? Auburn, oh, okay. In 1994-95, he had a 46.4% a three-point percentage. Wow. Pretty good. Did he... I, looks like he... Looks like he's a 41% Three-point shooter. Wow. That's not bad. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Inside of the empanada, the beef, and the 
Is he one of those 50, 30, 90 guys? Or what's that What's that stat in basketball that's like a holy grail stat? Like your, your field goal percentage is like 50% or is it 30, 30? I don't know. And then your free throw percentage is 90% and your three-point percentage is like 35 or something. I don't know. There, there's like a... There's like a holy grail stat. Is it 50, 40, 90, Zach Paul? 50 from the field, 40 from three, and then 90% from the free throw line, right? From the charity stripe. That's Those are incredible. If you wrap your head around that, those are kind of incredible percentages. Like over your career. All right, it's... Who has that? It's a long break. We can We can discuss things like this. I don't think too many players have that. There's TJ Warren for the Suns. Zach Paul saying only Steve Nash, Steph Curry, and Larry Bird. Dirk, I believe. Paul's thinking Mark Price, maybe. Suns, Nancy. There's a Giannis. Julius Randle. Now there are there are people who've had that in a season, and then there I don't, who has them. I don't think too many people have them as as, as in a career. Bro, does Malcolm Brogdon have a career fifty forty ninety? I mean, his career is still in progress, but maybe I, am I under? I'm probably I'm probably underrating Brogdon. There is Alexi Shved to 74, 29-74. I guess I should have specified the question. There are people who, there are, how many people have done it in a single season and how many people have done it in a career? Maybe career zero? Sean, so those are the eight. Are you saying those are the eight? I should have specified, I apologize. Making the question all murky. When Sean, you say those are the eight, are those career stats or are those in a single, have done it in a single season? There's AD for the Pelicans, Relic for uh, Benson. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So eight, those are the eight ever over their career. Adam Kelly saying Brogdon has done it in a season. That's still impressive to do it in a season. There's Derek Favors in a blank. Wow, his career is 47, 38 and a half, and 89 and a half. That's a, that's a pretty, I mean, maybe it's somewhat, I mean, if maybe it's somewhat arbitrary, <laughs> you know, in the way maybe like some baseball stats guys will... Stats people will look kind of like look down on the triple crown because it doesn't really mean that much, but I don't know. 50, 40, 90 seems pretty good to me. This is Cavs edition of LeBron James, a lead insert for the coach Paul Nixon. Uh oh, Jack B has different numbers. He says Nash's field goal percentage is actually 49. Just off? Maybe maybe some people are, are rounding up. Maybe some statisticians are rounding up. There's T Mac. Orlando edition. Pau Gasol. Bulls. Flavor of pineapple 
Yeah, Steve Nash, definitely a baller, Arthur. That's for sure. I mean, he had back injuries, right, Arthur? Because by the time he got to the Lakers, I mean, he looked great for whatever limited time he played. But I think those back injuries really, really just, he never got got it going with the Lakers, at least consistently. Which which was a shame. I mean, I, th I thought, I mean, A, as a Lakers fan, I wanted, like, Steve Nash there, right, to maybe chase another ring. But it just didn't quite work out. But I also liked him as a player, just in general. And it was, you know, I always hoped that it would get more consistent production from him. But I always liked him as a player, so it was a shame that, that it was kind of those back injuries that that eventually did him in. All right, so we got the heavy stuff out of the way. So now maybe let's go into some... Let's get a bit of the older stuff out of the way, too. Let's get this old hoops out of here. Can't, you can't blame it on Robert Ory, Arthur. It was probably probably a pre-existing condition that Nash had. Can't blame. Can't blame them. Uh, yes, Tyler. Steve Nash, also a, a tremendous world-class soccer player. He is, Jack B. In fact... Uh, well, the Champions League hasn't really been happening, but whenever it gets, the past couple seasons of the UEFA Champions League, that big soccer tournament of all the top clubs in all the European leagues, it's on TNT. It's broadcast on TNT here in the States for us. And Steve Nash does, uh, Steve Nash does like pre, post, pre, half, and post. That's what he's doing. I think he's doing some coaching work too, but also, I think Jaw F in the chat, we found someone that has actually played this game. And he said he enjoyed it. It was good. And this guy, there he is. Josh says, very funny. He says, this guy, man, this guy drove me bonkers. Andrew Bynum was one of those classic, has all the talent in the world. And if he put his mind to it, he could have been, a, you know, a pretty dominant big man for a good chunk of time. But just poor conditioning. Injured, would prob which probably led to injuries, and just mentally head not in the game, you know, and just yeah, kind of a lazy punk. But that's rookie Damian Lillard, by the way. That goes to the Trailblazers. Man, what a what a frustrating player. <laughs> But, like, yeah, he could dominate when he tried. He actually it's, it's actually played well with that guy. And he, he had a decent basketball IQ, you know? On the court, he would generally make the right decisions. You know, wasn't taking errant shots or anything like that, but just off the court, 
was just a mess, and I don't think he was really conditioned that well. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit of a frustra frustrating. Yeah, Derek E. It's like Dwight had like a poor Dwight Andrew Bynum, poor man's Dwight Howard, but like miles worse. Because Dwight Howard is probably borderline Hall of Famer. You know, you just look at his numbers, and it's just like. The thing with Dwight is like Dwight could have been one of the greatest big men of all time, and instead, you know, is like borderline Hall of Fame big man. That's that's where that's where Dwight Howard messed up. Andrew Bynum could have been at least a perennial second or first team All NBA guy. Maybe win a couple Defensive Player of the Year awards just due to his size, but nothing. It just kind of petered out. All right. If the game didn't change, Dwight would still be a star, says Adam Kelly. If he developed a free throw and a three-point shot. I'm convinced after I saw what what Brooke Lopez did, if Brooke Lopez can, can work on it and shoot threes, so can Dwight Howard. I think he just didn't want to do it. There's Giannis for the Bucks, Jonathan. I think, I think, and I think that's the thing with Dwight Howard is like he had, every, he has every physical ability to do that, but why didn't he? You know, right? Exactly, Adam Kelly. Yeah, he got paid and he got a little lazy. He was just like, oh, offense runs through me. It's back to the basket post game. You know, feed it to Dwight. Like he kept going to teams that would that would do that, and if they changed that, then he wouldn't really adjust. To the other, to the other part of the game. That's why he's bounced around a little bit. There's rated rookie Devonte Graham Hollow. I saw your comment earlier. Well, I, I don't remember what that contract was, but yeah, Lakers do have a tendency to to overpay. It's, Rated rookie Dante DiVincenzo for the pink hypers. Those pink hypers aren't numbered, but they obviously will ship. Uh, let's go with some old 12, 13 gold standard. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Adam Kelly is like, well, Brooke did have an 80% free throw percentage, so he did have a pre existing ability to maybe, maybe shoot from a little bit of distance. But Dwight's doing all right with LA in his current role or what was his current role whenever NBA comes back but but I think uh, and all these will go to the Lakers of course so Dwight coming off the bench has, and he just has a rejuvenated attitude it's a great it's a great story um, but maybe too little too late for his overall legacy there's Julius Irving and there's Kevin Garnett, KG Celtics edition to 349. I love KG T Wolves edition. I hate KG Celtics edition. I do love KG in general, but. Did not like him as a Celtic. Is William saying Robin Lopez is better than Andrew Bynum? Hmm. I'd have to look at the number. We'd have to look at the tape. There's James Harden for the Rockets. That'll be for uh, Johnny. If we take Robin Lopez's best season to Andrew Bynum's best season, I'd have to look. But I think Andrew Bynum, I don't know. There's, there's Greg Monroe to 349. Nick Collison at 349. There's Damian Lillard to 10. It's easy to get good again with LeBron's on the team. Well, he doesn't play. I don't think he really plays with LeBron that often. I think he's always like second unit. And he's been looking good. and that's Maybe he does play with LeBron. That probably does help. 
There is Isaiah Thomas, King's Edition, jersey and autograph. Man, poor Isaiah Thomas. Kings, Joe Kelly with that. Dodgers reliever Joe Kelly? We got Nick Anderson, Orlando Magic. Mark of Gold to 99. That's pretty nice. Wait, is that Lillard a rookie? Wait, this is 12. Right, I, this, this keeps... I keep forgetting about this... Uh, this uh, mixed draft class, they don't even put they don't put RC on here. That goes to James Beadle and the Trailblazers. He had another Dame rookie from earlier too. There was a lockout, so they put like two seasons in one. It got weird. Gold Strike autograph, two hundred five out of two forty nine. That's Eric Maynor for OKC. That'll be for Jeremy Agno. DeMarcus Cousins, white gold relic. Another king hit for Joe Kelly. Wow. Graded a nine. That Lillard is about four or five hundred bucks. It's not bad. There you go, uh, James Beadle. Looks like that spot's covered. We've got Ed Davis gold strike signatures. In 2012, was Ed Davis a Laker or a Buck or none of the above? No, he was a Laker in 14-15. In 12-13, he was a Toronto Raptor. He was picked 13th overall. A lot of, a lot of memories coming back here. All right, Toronto Raptors, that's going to be for Josh. Yeah, Raptors, that's right, Adam. Then went to the Grizz for a season and went to the Lakers for a season. Then the Trailblazers for a few seasons. Then the Nets, and then he's currently with the Jazz. Nice. He's still playing? I like that. How, how many minutes was he getting with the Jazz? No? No stats? Are you injured? Oh, he suffered a fractured fibia during a during a season game during an, on no, in early November. Was expected to be sidelined for four weeks, but I guess never played a game. So I'm assuming then COVID got in the way. But with the Nets, played 81 games off the bench with the Nets. 18 points, 18 minutes a night. There you go, Ed Davis grinding out a solid career. Sometimes you got to root for those guys too. Not all about the stars all the time. You know, he is. I I I I had fond memories of him as a uh, as a Laker. Wait, is that card Grizzlies? Okay, well, I'll have to look then. That's what Adam Kelly is saying. All right, let's. Let's double check here. Gold standard, where are you? There you are. Group break checklist. Doing all the hard work. We appreciate that. Helps with moments like this. And that's card number six. Oh, wait. Ah, look at this. All right. So, according to the checklist, here I'm going to flip screens for a second. Card six is Raptors Ed Davis. The other cards are indeed Grizzlies. So, card six, Gold Strike Signatures. Still goes to the Raptors and Joshua. But Adam Kelly is not wrong. 
because those cards right there, the Boolean brands, Marks of Gold and White Gold Threads, are Grizzlies. There you go. No, 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 it's, it's all good. It's all good, but it, you're not wrong, though. So basically, like, basically, I guess, laundry tag, brand, Boolean brand tags out of two are, uh, are Grizzlies. Marks of Gold, Grizzlies. White Gold Threads, Grizzlies. Gold Strike Signature is the only non-Grizzly. This would have been controversial in 2012. All right, what am I doing next? Uh, crown, get, get this old Crown Royale out of the way, and then we'll get to the more recent stuff. We gotta check. We got. We got it. We gotta do the check. That's why we do it. There's Larry Bird to 99. Right, yeah, that's messed up. Hashtag that's messed up, Naked Knight. Arthur, did you see Brian Peoples' t-shirt mock-up in our Facebook group? There's the Spurs, jersey and autograph, Derek White. 79 out of 199. Right, that, that redemption's expired. Uh, James, but you can probably get it for points. They might send you the Ed Davis, though. Out of 249, Kevin Garnett. Yeah, Brian Peoples mocked up a uh, potential t-shirt design, Arthur, for, for that's messed up guy. All right, that's Timberwolves KG, by the way. That's going to go to Diane. All right, let's get this little old mosaic. We got some more recent mosaic back here. And mosaic hobby coming, uh, dropping on the 20th of May. You can pre-order now on jazbeescasebreaks.com. That's a good plug. That's a professional plug, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so this is 1718 Prism Mosaic. Cantor Green. All of these will ship, but there's Enos Cantor Green to 25. The Dario Saric, not numbered. Harry Giles Rookie, not numbered. Bam Adebayo Rookie, that's pretty solid. Draymond, Harrison Barnes, Bam Adebayo Green. That's pretty good, Bam Adebayo. Is a pretty solid one for Benson. Derek, you're going to buy all the Pelicans and Mosaic Hobby? We're waiting for someone. Do that. Derek E says JK? I don't know. We, we've, we, know, we, know, we know Derek E's average spend. He could if he wanted to. It's, it's pretty risky. But... High risk, high reward. <laughs> um, someone will get it. I, I, someone will get it at least for a couple cases, I think, by the time we get there. Otherwise, listen, we'll, we'll do mini breaks for, we'll do some sort of filler break for it. No big deal. All right, so here's the deal. We're going to go... We're going to do these little optic guys. We're going to do, then we'll, maybe we'll do mosaic. Then we'll do prism hanger, prism blaster, and then prism retail to close things out. So from front to the back, from the windows to the wall.
All right, good luck, everybody. About an hour into 50 minutes, 5-0 into our 15-box windmill dunk basketball mixer. Now, if you're sitting here going, you're going, Joe, I'm not having a very good break at all. To which I will reply, we still have many more boxes to go. And if you're still not convinced, you're like, Joe, all the top rookies I could have gotten, you finished those boxes already. Fair play. Then I will counter with this. We're still giving away that. So if you're having a terrible break, this is going to go to one person in the break. 10 out of 10, John Morant, autograph from Donner's Optic Basketball. If you had a great break, you can still win that too. That'd be a, a, an excellent cherry on top. All right. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. There's my house, Zion. So that'll go to Benson and the Pelicans. Adam Kelly says, Adam Kelly says he'll offer 4K to someone who gets it. Adam Kelly is a frequent buyer of the Grizzlies. He's so it'll go to it'll go to a good home. Ladies and gentlemen, it'll go to a good home. If you if uh, if you let Adam buy it off of you, unless he wins it, then he saves himself four thousand dollars. Zach Paul saying, "Let's hurry up and do this. I cannot win the job right and then go eat dinner." William Fulmer, what's up? Are they John both John Morant and Zion South Carolina guys? Um, I'm going to leave it in the top loader. Kind of hard to tell unless the top loader is scratched up, but through the top. Uh, there it is. Through the penny sleeve there. I'm not going to take it out of the penny sleeve. That's just a little bit of dust on the penny sleeve there. I mean, hard to tell on the camera just because we have the studio lights that reflect weird. Oh, let me show you the back. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. I don't know where we even got this, but that's just... That's just some schmutz on the, on the, uh, on the team bag there. So, but you guys saw the car. That's the quality there. Definitely, I think definitely worth grading for whoever gets it, or whoever, or if you end up selling it, whoever buys it. <laughs> Either way, someone grade that thing. Let us know what it turns out to be. But again, with the, I mean, we have pretty good production value here, but I think with the lighting and everything here, just take that, take what you saw with a grain of salt. Hard, always hard to tell the surface on there, but looks at, just eyeballing it looks pretty good. Derek saying, I've been saying this before the, before the end of the draft. Or at the uh, since before the draft, but he thinks that John Morant ends up having the better career. I don't know if I agree or disagree, but why? Why do you think that? Adam Kelly's gonna take that step further, saying he thinks John's gonna have the best career of the last two drafts. R.J. Barrett, my house. So this is the mega box. My house, Nikola Vucevic, Nikola Melli, Ante de Campo, Sekou Demboya rated rookie. All right, so nothing earth shattering here. A couple Giannis's for uh, for the Bucks, Jonathan Lobrig. Luca's definitely better now, says Adam, but Ja has a better ceiling. All 
also nothing earth shattering here. Is that true, Sean? According to what report? Apparently, drafted players, according to Sean Corbett, says that the drafted players pick Nasir Little to have the best career. Derek saying, skill sets off the charts. He can do it all. In the end, he'll clean up with his three-point game, speaking of jaw. And Zion's just a big bully. For now. I mean, I feel like Zion still kind of a... John ja Morant feels more polished, that's for sure. Luka Doncic still has some years too. Which I think, like I think Luka's development is going to be really terrifying. Terrifyingly good. And I think Zion's still a little raw. Hey, listen, for me, and the industry that I'm in, if Luka Doncic, Zion Williamson, and John Morant battle out to be the best of this last two draft classes for a decade to come, hashtag good for the hobby. I'll take it. There's Isaiah Thomas. No, check that. Sean Corbett says not Nasir Little, but rather Cam Reddish is what drafted NBA players thought would have the best career. Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish still hasn't really, you know, still still hasn't hit his, uh, I guess, potential yet. I guess he won't for a while. But just in general, while other rookies have have started off on a faster foot. I feel like Cam Reddish still has a chance to to really show what he can do. There's Kenrick Williams, Jeremy Lamb. Adam's not thrilled about what? Oh, next year's draft class? Yeah, well, I thought... I thought I I thought they said that about last about this draft class, that it was just Zion and RJ and there was nothing else after that. But it turned out to be all right. But I feel like John Morant got a little help in the tournament, and we didn't have a tournament. So I think that's where, I, that's where I'm concerned. So if we had a tournament, I would be less concerned. You know, because... Guys like John Morant looked great in the tournament. You know, I think he might have still been slotted in this similar draft spot. But that certainly helped put him kind of in the minds of like us uh, in the hobby. And then he just went off, so that that also helped. I don't know. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a little weird, where we're gonna have to sort of wait and see. There won't be pre-season hype like there was for Zion, that's for sure. So that preseason's going to get weird too. But the 2020-2021 product, I think we might have to wait a little bit. It's kind of a wait and see. Someone's going to emerge. Someone always does. Someone will emerge in next year's draft class, but I don't know if it's going to be as immediate. This is the the hanger, hanger box, with PJ Washington. Nice sensational relic there for the Hornets. That's going to go to Ryan Shackleton. There's 
silver mark is smart. And look at that. Nice. And a Zion flipped around. What does that mean? So there's a cracked ice orange Ja Morant for Paul Nixon in the Grizzlies. Sorry, I can't catch the light on this, but it's really nice. <laughs> We got Michael Bridges, Alan Crabb, Chris Paul. And this should be a variation. Nice. That goes to Benson and the Pelicans. A little dusty on the top loader, but the card was clean, man. Very nice. All right, let's blast off. Um, Adam, unless you don't care, I would rather not have your personal email address shown to the 104 people watching the chat. I cannot vouch for every single... I can vouch for Paul Nixon. I can't vouch that anyone else will not use your email for nefarious purposes. Maybe sign you up for some adult websites. So I'm going to hide that. Um, just email me. I, I have to do this for, I think, Jeff Peace from yesterday, too. But just shoot us an email. We don't care. Jaspiescasebreaks at gmail.com. We'll risk our email address. And then uh, just let me know, hey, it's okay to share my email. Just give us that authorization. It's okay to share my email address with Paul Nixon. And then I'll be able to get that to, to you guys in the next day or two. I gotta eat, I gotta send that same email to to between Jeff and Bill from yesterday. As well, I just reminded myself. Brandon Clark's not bad too, right? I think some Brandon Clark like Silvers can still do well. There's Jason Kidd, and there's Drew Holiday. Mr. Mike Daddy, what's going on? Doing well. Voice is starting to a little sore, but. But so far, so good. I may have to brush up on brush up on my uh, American Sign Language maybe tomorrow or Saturday. All right, no worries, Adam. All right, last box of our 15 box of windmill dunk basketball mix. I'm pretty sure I've seen John Morant do some windmill dunks, haven't we? He's pretty good. I've heard of him. Nice. Oh, William Fulmer saying uh, one spot left in the football mixer. How's that mini break doing? That that helps sell out that football mixer. I think we still need to do a couple of those. I'll go through orders after this. Tons, Sean. I think we've got some videos up of our, our big hits of the day and all the breaks. Uh, Jeff Iveson, that's what we've been told. Yes, still, still, still targeting the 25th for that Bowman baseball release. Nick Bruno saying contenders two spots away. Mini breaks half sold out, says William. Excellent. We may need to do one more, but I'll go through orders and figure out where we stand on that after this. 
and after maybe a quick five minute break. Retail box, and we'll give away that John Morant. No points, right? I hope I didn't just didn't jinx myself, but no points. Seiko Demboya, that he's got some upside. I've heard of this Giannis guy; he's pretty good. Rajon Rondo, Green, Lou Williams, Silver. That will ship. Luka Doncic, second year. I've heard of him. Goga Batadze. Red Wave or Ruby Wave. Can't keep track of all the names. LeBron James. Clay Thompson Silver. Donovan Mitchell Hyped Green. Emergent Mafondu Cabanelli. Shaq Green. Wiggins. Courtney Lee Silver. Romeo Langford. And Garrison Matthews is your rookie penmanship autograph. That'll be for the coach, Paul Nixon and the Wizards. Langston Galloway. Rudy Gobert, Cam Reddish. The base rookie, but obviously those base rookies will ship. Michael Porter Jr., Paul George, Silver, DeAndre Hunter, nice, Hawks, Russell Westbrook, Kareem, Zion, Instant Impact, and Rudy Gobert. All right, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our 15-box Windmill Dunk Basketball Mixer. Another Zion for Benton and the Pels. Nice silver DeAndre Hunter for Joseph L. Wirt and the Hawks. He won that spot in a cello pack break. This guy's got some upside too. Good upside, good upside. LeBron James, great player here. I've heard of him. James Beadle, who has my Lakers. Even these Luka Doncic second years have been doing well, James Beadle. It's a, it's a spot that he won. And the Giannis hyped insert for the Bucks for Jonathan Lobre also won that spot. All right, we'll do a quick recap after I give this Ja Morant away to somebody in the break. Good luck. So let's go back to the list right here. Let's get everyone's names from Joe down to Paul. Let's put them into this blank list right here. Let's randomize it. Let's upload it. One and a four, five times. One, two, three, four, and one more. Fifth and final time. Good luck, everybody. Thanks to everybody who got into the break. I really appreciate it. Let's hit again. Fifth and final time. Congrats to the name on top, and that's going to be Adam Kelly. Did that really happen? Did I do this right? Four and a one, five times. Five times right here. Adam Kelly. Wow. So he gets the John Morant that he was going to pay someone $4,000 for. I did this right, right? I didn't go once more on the randomizer. No, there's five. There's five. That's crazy. If you're wondering who steals your Grizzlies in group breaks, it's usually Adam Kelly. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. This time, he had the Spurs. This time, it worked out really nicely. There you go. Here's the recap. Congrats, man. You're welcome. Well, now that I know Adam Kelly has $4,000 sitting around for, uh, for a John Morant card, a lot of breaks he could get into with that. <laughs> All right. Nice Dame. That Dame was pretty incredible. 
Isaiah Thomas. There's another rookie, Damian Lillard, LeBron James. Some more Giannis. Not, not a bad break at all, ladies and gentlemen. Started off a little weird with YouTube going down, but, but I think we're now we're uh, looks like we're back on track. Thanks very much, everyone. Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. That's me, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye bye.